Now it is my honor to uh, embarrass myself by admitting that I was at the head of the line of the people to get autographs from our next speaker. <laughs> Julie Andrews is one of the world's most beloved and recognizable entertainers and has been delighting audiences, including my own children and me and my wife, since she was a child. You all know her from her films, from her performances on television and in the theater. What you may not know is that she's also a favorite of children through her books, such as The Last of the Really Great Wang Doodles, The Little Bow series, and the Dumpy the Dump Truck series, of which you've heard mentioned before. And Julie puts the same love and energy into her writing that she does into her performing. She once said, to me, it's just such a joy to write, to watch the pages grow. Creating something, making a whole new world, is such a pleasure. Julie brought joy to millions of children and their parents in the Walt Disney film classic Mary Poppins. Her first film role, for which she won the 1964 Academy Award for Best Actress. Walt Disney chose her for the role after seeing her perform in the stage musical Camelot. For by this time, she was well established as one of the leading lights of the theater. But awards come easily to Julie Andrews. She's won a Grammy. She's won an Emmy to go with her Academy Award. She also the first, was the first actress to receive the prestigious Tribute Award from the British Academy for Film and Television Arts. Tonight, Julie will speak about a subject as dear to her as it is to our sponsors, the importance of reading to children. Please join me in welcoming Julie Andrews. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And good evening, everybody. It is a great honor to be here in this inspiring building filled with written words, words that define us as a civilization, that create a sense of wonder, that explain the miracles of life, that challenge the mind, and that bring hope to a future. Words matter. Books count. Your presence here this evening is a clear affirmation of the importance of that belief. It warms my heart that the President and the First Lady, members of Congress and other leaders who are here tonight are among the forefront of those reaching out to this country, delivering that message, particularly to our youth. There is no greater gift we can give to our children than a sense of wonder at the miracles that are under our noses every day. And the best way I know to access that wonder is through the wisdom of words. In a media world of sound bites and quick MTV images, reality shows of daring adventures or finding a wife for that special bachelor, <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I worry that we're delivering a steady stream of manufactured slices of life that are kind of spoon-fed to us so that all we have to do is receive them rather than participate in any way. The joy of reading is that it asks us to use our imaginations and therefore we engage and play an active role in our world and in our experiences and in our collective future. There once was a time when we took great joy in reading or in being read too, when we could take that moment to close our eyes and be transported into another world, that of our imagination, one that would supply colors and smells and feelings and most of all, ideas. And please don't misunderstand, I really love the world of filmed entertainment and filmed storytelling. I mean, it pleases me to know that a younger version of what you see before you is whom you might visualize if you were to read a book written by P.L. Travers entitled Mary Poppins. <laughs> but that should not and cannot replace the joy of reading. In the best of all possible worlds, of course, one would enhance the other. I mean, reading the book might encourage you to see the movie, and seeing the movie should hopefully inspire you to read the book. 
There are minds far wiser than mine that can explain behaviors and habits. We all know that many of our better behaviors and habits are learned by example and in a nurturing environment. Reading to our infant children can only instill an appreciation for the written word even before they can actually read. It creates a bond between parent and child, between grandparent and child. It need only be 10 minutes a night, but may well create a lifetime of interest in reading and comprehension, letting your child follow your finger as it crosses the page, regardless of whether he or she can tell the difference between a vowel or a consonant. Asking them questions after finishing a chapter, helping them reap the joy of using their imagination. Filmed entertainment and television, computers and the internet and so forth, they certainly have their place in life and can live in a parallel universe, but not if they replace the unqualified joy of reading. It is our responsibility to ensure that all children everywhere are given that gift. Words with wonder. Words illuminate, they lead to wisdom, which must inevitably lead to wonder. So let us make our commitment to perpetuate these building blocks and instill them in future generations, for they will face more choices and have to make more decisions in this brave new world than you or I have ever known. We must honor the young minds that will shape and define the future, and the best way to do that is to help them to learn to read. Thank you.